Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Deborah, and thank you for the great response to my 3000 subby giveaway video. I've had lots of comments, which is great. And I just wanted to share with you the things that people like. Now, what I'm doing today is Roxy's weekly challenge and I'm doing the belly bands. So I've just got some manila cardstock. I've cut it down and I'm just gonna stick things on. Now, what I'm using are the doors. Remember I mentioned yesterday that I might use the rest of the doors and make it into a belly band and I thought why not so that's what I'm using today but meanwhile I just wanted to run through some of the things that people said that they liked we got such a variety that it was really good and that's only so far so if you add more if you haven't added your comment yet then I will certainly continue to let you know what people like so we've got books napkins thread for slow stitching we also have vintage magazines and watercolour pencils. I haven't had my watercolours out for ages. Not that I have pencils, but I do have paints. There's also, uh, what else? Vintage wallpaper and tattered laces. That's a good one. And then, of course, Tim Holtz. And people said generally they like Tim Holtz stuff. They also said specifically they like paper dolls, Tim Holtz scissors, which is what these are, and what else? Other sorts of things. Oh, and the paper, because the paper's been discontinued, so we're not being able to get most of it anymore. We actually don't know what he's still going to produce. I suspect he'll still do the wallflower paper pad, because that's a very popular one, but you never know. We just have to wait and see what he decides to keep on doing. I'm just trimming this down at the back. They also like um, the Dover books. And if you don't know what the Dover books are, I must admit I had to Google it as well. And the Dover books are, I think there's like an antiquarian sticker book. That's the one that I've seen in the main. And that is a Dover book. And apparently there's a whole lot because I Googled it. And there's a whole lot that are similar to that. So that's that bit done. But, pretty plain, so of course, what am I going to add? Hmm, some paper dolls. Did you guess? Anyway, let's add some paper dolls. Now, if you remember, I had these paper dolls that I cut, and I cut like their heads off and things like that. And in this case, I cut the head and the trousers off, and that just sounds terrible, doesn't it? And this little girl. So I thought I'd try and use them here. I've got this skirt as well, but I thought I'd try and use them down on this tag. First of all, I'll have to straighten it. It's very crooked. I think that'll have to do though. I don't know. I'll probably end up cutting it again in the cutter once I put the dolls on. So I was just going to stick some things down. For example, this little girl, I'm just gonna put her down here I wonder if she'll sit like here on this door and I probably just have to trim across there I don't really want to do that though actually what I'll do is I'll move her in like this perhaps maybe let's see what else is on an angle no that should be all right I'll move her in like that I can always put something else on top of her head and then I'm just going to position them as I keep chatting. So these people haven't got any heads either. <laughs> it's really terrible to say. Um, so I've got this chap here. I'll put him here. The other things that people like are looking, um, going for old things like um, from thrift shops and the like, which of course, you know, we all love that getting harder and harder to find though as people snap them up I must say okay I'm gonna to have to start putting some down I can't keep fiddling all right let's put her down for a start so also modeling paste anything gold and what else did I get oh 3d embossing files or folders and gilding wax it's an interesting one too so the other thing that I had a couple of questions. So the questions, really interesting. I had a couple of people who want me to make things and I will do that. One of them was um, vintage ephemera, for example, tickets. And I will sort of definitely be making something like that. 
and then I also had somebody who wanted me to make um, something with fabric so I will do that as well just have to put that on my list which I've done and then I had a couple of questions as well that people wanted me to answer and one of the questions that I had was what is my favorite what are my favorite craft stores and that's an interesting one isn't it so of course I teach at Bella Paperie and I also do the monthly newsletter for them as well so obviously that is in Brendale in Brisbane they also do do mail orders throughout Australia if you're interested and that's you know got to be a favorite then hasn't it just because I teach there I'm wondering if I can put this girl on top like that possibly possibly let's try it and see and um, I also do buy some stuff if I can't find it anywhere else from craft online which is an Australian online shop but I don't really like buying from there because they have a lot of um, you know they don't have very many photos or anything and plus you really can't sort of go in and look at the products so I do my homework or I just buy what I know maybe if it's a repeat buy and I can't get it elsewhere and occasionally I buy from the smaller shops but mostly I go and source my stuff from other places for example vintage shops and op shops I buy a lot from op shops is that looking all right I think it's okay isn't it and I'll just put this one here I have to find some heads for these but I will don't worry we'll panic about finding heads later I want to put her down there or up here like this I like her feet I'd like to get her feet in okay let's put her feet in let's put her in see if we can be inspired by this <laughs> ah, get her feet there and I'll lift this girl's feet up and put her down I also buy from Etsy you might think that's funny because I have an Etsy shop but I like to support other suppliers on Etsy so I do buy from Etsy because I figure people support my shop I'm going to support their shops as well I don't know how I'm going to get her head on there now that I've squished that down but anyway might not be happening let's pop that to one side for now because I also wanted to work on this one another belly band and this time I've got these tags so they are from that Minte tag book that I showed you in yesterday's video and I've also shown it to you before in flip throughs and things but there's quite pretty colors in these tags so I thought that I would use these in a belly band just because they're tags doesn't mean you can't sort of chop into them and use them in a different way a lady called Yvonne asked me what product or tool is on my wish list so first of all I have to say that I don't have much stuff on my wish list because if I want it I go and buy it which is terrible but that's what I do um, I really have been thinking lately about whether or not I want one of those machines that can cut things like this and particularly the the sheets of fussy cutting that if you can put it in a machine and it'll just automatically chop around it and I have done a little bit of investigation on that I'm not sure if that's the way I want to go yet or not but I was thinking about that the other day and thinking maybe I should get myself one of those machines because it will save an awful lot of time and also it will also cut the images a lot better than what I can cut them out which is not great at times so I don't know has anyone else got one of those machines and what they think of it I'd be interested to know that information uh, I sort of want the, the tag shape at the top so that we can see it I'll put this little one here and then this red one hmm. not sure I want to introduce red it's very very bright isn't it the red hmm, might really might really not look great if I do that let me cut it off 
and I could reuse this piece down here like that and stick that down. Then I did get a question from, I've written all this down because I'd never remember it otherwise. I had a question from, let's see, oh, a lady who lives in the UK and she didn't give me her name and I do know what her um, you know, channel uh, YouTube name is, but I won't repeat that. I don't know whether she'd want me to do that, so I'm not going to. Anyway, she'll know who she is because we have something in common that we both love New York City, so oh, she'll know who she is. And she asked me about Rockhampton because she told me a very interesting story about her father who came out here in the 1960s as what we call a 10 pound pom. Now, back in the day, in the 60s, Australia was accepting people from England and they could come here for 10 pound and hence the name 10 pound pom because pom's a word that we use. It's probably too derogatory these days, but that was a, that is a word for people from England because it's um, pom, P-O-M-E, person of mother England and they were called 10 pound poms. And then her father went back and she lives in the UK now, so he must have gone back. I think she said he did. And she said that he lived in Rockhampton and she wanted to know uh, what Rockhampton was like, which I found very amusing because that's where my husband comes from. He's a rocky boy. You'll notice in Australia, we shorten everything. We don't say anything in full. If we can shorten it, we will. Names and whatever we can shorten, we will. So yes, my husband is a rocky boy and she said, what's it like now? And I can only comment having not lived there, but I've been there quite a few times, of course. I don't think it's somewhere I'd like to live. You know, it's um, population is there. It's got maybe, I'm not sure, maybe 60,000 people. Somebody from up there will probably correct me on that. <laughs> we'll see. But, um, and I'm sure it's lovely if you like living there but for me it's it's very tropical and so I wouldn't you know I wouldn't like it the few times I've been up there it's been very hot I don't think like anything I don't that's um hot I don't even like Brisbane it's too hot for me now so that is um that is what Rocky is like you know but if you live there I'm sure that people live there and they love it and you know everyone's got different tastes and ideas on what's nice and what's not but that's where my husband grew up, that's where he went to school and his parents lived there until he left home and then eventually, well they were going to move down here and then his father died in a car accident and his mother ended up moving down here because that's always was their goal when he retired that they would move down south. So there you go, which is very unfortunate that he didn't make it to a very old age at all. So, I don't know, do you like that? I've just lost my light. I thought it was a beautiful sunny day. I went for a ride this morning and then I've just noticed that my light seems to have gone. Now, I wonder if I can sit this guy on his hat. All right, I'll do that, that's funny. So, two belly bands with that technique of using, you know, pre-made items and Tim Holtz dolls. And I need a head for this one. So I'm just going to look into my box of Tim Holtz stuff and see if I've got a spare head floating around. Okay, I haven't been able to find those um, spare heads. I thought I had some and I'm thinking that I must have used them. But I've come up with an alternative. And that is this dude here. So this guy, he has a puppy dog with him. And I've cut the dog off and I can still use him. And I'm going to use the dog head. So I've got another one that I'm going to put on down here at the bottom. And I think that that will look a bit crazy. Okay, crazy. <laughs> but, you know, I quite like it. And the puppy dog's very cute. So I'm going to put this dog down here. Oh, I didn't put any glue behind him. Hang on. Let me do that. All right. And then I'm going to take another one. And... I can still use the man because I'm just cutting the dog off, see? So he works out perfectly well by himself. I don't think I've ever taken the puppy off before for him, but why not? And then I've cut down the body. 
the legs off and then I can tuck it in behind. I might have to cut this one off a bit more and put some glue on the back and then tuck it down so that they've got heads at least, even if they're puppy dog heads. So now they've all got heads, albeit not their own heads. <laughs> that looks quite cute. And then I don't know if I'm going to do anything more with this one. I think I quite like that one how it is. I like the man sitting on top of the other dude's head. So they are two belly bands. And now I think I'm going to do another belly band. And this time I think I'm just going to do all of the paper dolls. So I'll go and get some more card and I'll do that. So I have another two pieces of card. I already had this cut. And I'm going to start with the belly band this way and just put some of these people down on them. Like dude without a dog, he can go down here. And I've got this man here. And probably not that little boy, no. Maybe this lady. She's got a hand out, so we'll put a hand there. Because I thought just paper dolls on there might be quite nice. Have to put them down quite low though, won't I? I actually need to watch how big this belly band's getting because it's getting quite large. I think it's the full 12 inches by the look of it, or pretty close. So maybe I will cut it down to, what, about, about 8 inches, about there. That might be quite good. And then I can go back and start putting these people on again. Now they look really big because I've cut it down. <laughs> That's okay. And then I was going to use these little girls. And I will still go with this lady and this gentleman. I kind of want to poke them behind one another. I don't want to have them all really showing. I do want them to show, but not con you know not all of the sort of thing. I think this little boy needs to go on the other side here because he's kind of facing that way. His body's facing that way, even if his head's not. And then the little girls can go up the top here. Okay, I think I'll even move them over so that they're actually coming off the edge and I'm not going to cut them this time. Don't like that. Need to have something better. Maybe her. Okay, let's start at the top and I'm going to move these girls to the right rather than the left I think. Just looking at how that's panning out there. I put glue all over her. Oh, I didn't have to because she's going to be off the page. Hopefully that'll be okay though. And then this woman, because I want her dress off the page like that. And then this lady can go here. Not, you know, not hugely off the page, just sort of somewhat. Move her up. Move her up. I like this guy here and this man at the back here. No, I'm going to have to move her over. It's too much dark. The coat, that lady's coat and this lady's dress need to be swapped. Okay, let's put her down. Yeah, I'll take their feet off only. Oh, that's not stuck on properly. No, I guess it is. It was just wasn't it's still a bit wet, that's why it's slipping around a bit. So just the feet off the bottom, nothing else at the moment. And then I'm going to keep the feet because I can use them on something else. And there you go, what about that? That's a belly band with a difference, isn't it? Yeah, I quite like that. Alright, so that's three. And then this one here, I'll take the rest of this here actually. And this paper is just Tim Holtz. It's the 12 by 12. Just, um, I don't know which one it is. It might be Memoranda. Mm, maybe not, but it's one of the ones that he does. And I've thought about doing a side belly band like this. 
with the larger people, maybe the seated people, like this dude can be leaning on her shoulder perhaps. What do you think, is that going to work out? Hmm. And I might do it a full one because what I can do then is I can take this and in a journal I can, you know, put it across both edge, um, both sides of the pages and even if I had another page in the signature in front of it then there'd be that on that side and that on that side. I quite like him leaning on her shoulder. Maybe I can take some more seated people and do a similar thing. Let's see, where's some more seated? Oh here, this couple. But I am going for the bigger ones this time. The bigger, oh they're huge, the bigger paper dolls actually. Now if I cut them off there, is that going to look any good still? I'd like that up a little higher I think. Now this is six, see, so this is a 12 inch piece because that's six so I know that's, I'm wondering if I should just leave them on there. Just keep them on there, have the lady there. This guy can be doing that. These people can be up here. And I need, I think I want more seated people. No standing people, just the people sitting. What about this little girl? To mix it up with a little girl. And then I did get another question, which again was a really, really interesting question. And uh, the question was, was you know completely nothing about crafting and it came from Jackie and it said what is my education background and I guess by that she means you know, what education have I had <laughs> and the answer is that um, obviously I went to primary school and I went to high school just in New South Wales at a standard um, what we call a in Queensland we call them state schools, in New South Wales they call them public schools but they're government run schools and I went to those and then in um, then I left school and got a job because I was a very naughty student because I was incredibly bored, I never studied, incredibly smart and didn't have to study so you know, still did really well even though I didn't study until my last couple of years and then I kind of, I don't know, school was incredibly boring, you know, it was too easy and I just didn't really like it, which is really quite a pity. So I basically didn't matriculate, that's what it's called here when you finish year 12, which is the last year of high school, and uh, I didn't matriculate and so then later not long after I left school I went back and got my matriculation at night school. You know, always do things the hard way, why not? Because um, I realised that I needed more of an education. So I did that and then I was going to go to uni and by that time I was married and had a baby, you know, very young <laughs> and decided that you know, it wouldn't really work anyway. I ended up leaving my husband and then while I was, um, you know, after I left my husband, I then had two children and um, I might cut around that, I think. And then I left him and with my two children and then I went back to study because I decided that actually I did have a brain and I better use it. So I went back and I studied computing. So I'm a trained computer programmer and that's what I did and I rose up the ranks quite quickly because I was a fairly vocal female and there weren't many vocal people where I worked and very few females. I was only one of a handful. I think there were four of us in the class that I did back in the 80s at, um, when I studied my qualification. There were four women and two of them, one dropped out, one finished but did nothing with it and there was only two of us and I know the, the other lady, she was a friend, she went back and ended up studying um, to be a counsellor, um, social services, so she didn't even use her computing 
expertise. I was the only one out of the four women and I went in at a really good time. So it was, um, I had a great career. So that's what I did for a living. And then in 2015, when I decided I wanted to retire, I actually studied again and got my certificate for in bookkeeping. And that's what I did for the last few years, the last five years that I worked, I was doing admin work and then I got my um, bookkeeping certification and I was a bookkeeper for a number of years, just on a casual part-time basis and then decided I had enough last year. So I retired in September last year. So that's my educational background. I grew up with a father who was very big on education. Education was everything to him. And uh, he was right, <laughs> I hate to admit it. There you go. What do you think? Do you like that? I think that'd look really nice in a journal. And then if you put it across and then like on the fold, you'd have these people on one side and then these people on the other side. You could even do it in the center part of your signature so that you had it. I like that I've cut that off. I'm leaving that for now. I may end up cutting that off and making her, you know, lean up against something else, but I'm gonna leave all these other little bits on the background too. Although maybe I shouldn't. I was just looking at that and wondering if I should or should not. You know what, I think I'm gonna cut them out. I like it with them cut out so that they look like they're just floating. Except for the lady on the end with her arm out, I'll have to um, not cut her out until I find something else for her to lean up against. Yeah, so that's it. That's my educational background for Jackie who wanted to know. I hope that answers your question. And before I went and studied, I had 10 years working in admin and I was doing some computing there as well, but just as an administrator. So I didn't actually study until I got my acceptance into college on my 30th birthday. Oh, well, actually it was the day after my 30th birthday. It came in the mail saying I'd been accepted. And so that was good, yeah. It's very lucky. And in those days, we didn't have fees or anything. Fees came in the next year, or no, the year after I left because college, because my husband, he was at college with me. That's where I met him. And he actually failed some subjects and he had to do another six months and he had to pay what we call HECS, which is a government fee they charge you once you start working and earning a certain, certain amount of money, they charge you a fee for the, um, for the, you know, the university fees that you didn't pay when you were going there. I know it works very different everywhere else, but that's how it works in Australia now. So I just missed those and uh, lucky to have done so, I think. Let's see if I can get in here. It's a bit, a bit tight in here. The beauty of cutting this is that I don't have to be right on that line because I can pull it back like this at the back side and chop it off. And you won't really know that it's not perfectly cut around that curve because I'm chopping it off. See, I can pull it back there and then chop it. And then on the front, it just looks like I followed that curve. But at the back, of course, we know that I haven't. Oh, is that a little bit down there? It is. Just cut that around. And is that a bit there too? Yes, it is a bit there too. It's looking at the back and that's looking pretty good. Got all the top bits, yes. Yes, I suppose I could cut her too. If I cut her, then at least I know I have to put her on something. Now, the other bit that I was gonna cut was this bit here, right in the center. Got it. Because it's got a little hole in there. And again, should have thought of this before I put them on, shouldn't I? It doesn't matter, I'll get there. <laughs> okay. All right. 
there you go there you go they're all sitting in a row and I'll put that on something it's really cool though isn't it I have a canvas and I had a it's a canvas that I've made I had a picture on the front of it and because I hadn't hadn't printed it on proper paper it's kind of faded and everything and I pulled it off I really like the canvas though it's an art canvas that I did and I'm thinking about putting a whole bunch of paper dolls on that so I might actually try that and if I do I'll show you the result of it and this is the kind of thing I was thinking of where you know a combination of these where I've got sort of paper dolls all over the place but that's it so I've got that as a long belly band and then I've got this one where I've still got the things putting out and these two that I have chopped off and then I've also substituted the heads for the dog's heads <laughs> which um which looks quite funny quite amusing but I quite like it <laughs> so here are the paper dolls that I've used after I did the video I decided that I would finish off this art piece because it's been sitting on the floor waiting to get done for ages and I really had that thought about using all those paper dolls on it and it looks really cute I think these are the new paper dolls from the new collection and I've purposely used all the ladies and the little girls because I love those and I thought that that would all go really well together this is just on a big canvas that I've done and I'll just scoot down the wall while I'm here and show you my other artwork <laughs> why not this is something that I did in a class and I'm very proud of myself because I actually hand drew those birds and painted them so that's another mixed media canvas and then I've got a watercolor painting that I did so I did this based on a watercolor painting that I already owned and it was a professional one and I wanted to see how I went if I sort of tried to replicate it and it actually turned out really well and then there's a, another piece I did that in a class and that's me when I was a baby and this is another piece of canvas that I did these are a couple of years old now maybe three years old I'm not sure so that's another one another mixed media piece and then another mixed media piece and I actually did use a Tim Holtz paper doll on that one as well all done on canvas and I'm quite happy with my art wall I've got them just hanging on some picture hooks I got the builder to put up a picture frame for me and I have to get a few more hooks because I've actually run out of room and they're just hanging with ribbon that's how I wanted them so that's it I hope you enjoyed seeing that and I will catch you next time thanks for watching this is Deborah cheers <music>